Orienteering is a sport where you use a map to go around a course, choosing which way you go to each of the checkpoints. It's mostly run as a time trial against the clock. It takes place all over the country, sometimes in forests, moors or heathlands, but also much closer to home, in towns, parks and open spaces. We have competitions and events where controls are marked with orange and white kites, as well as hundreds of permanent courses, especially in parks, that use marker posts. We're going to follow some groups as they learn how to orienteer in spaces close to urban areas. We're going to see them getting to grips with the map, learning all the features and getting more confident with the map. These are the first things to do when getting started. So the maps we use for orienteering are specially drawn and they include a lot of detail as they're drawn to a really large scale. You can even see some flower beds and some significant trees. They are a bird's eye view of the area, and they use set colours and symbols to show the land and different features. Let's go through some useful features to get you started. One of the most useful symbols is the black dashed lines, which show tracks and paths of different sizes. Open fields like this one are marked in yellow. Meanwhile, woods, trees and bushes are either white or green. Anything to do with water like this lake will be in blue. And black symbols are things that are man-made or rocky, like this building, wall, or fence. Dark brown lines are contours and they show hill shapes such as slopes. And many parks have tarmac paths and roads. They are in this light brown colour. North is at the top of the map and is shown by the arrows. A key will also be included to show what each symbol means, and these symbols will be the same whether you're doing an event or a permanent course. This is a typical course for a beginner. The red circles mark the checkpoints that you need to find, and the route in between them should be straightforward, usually just following a path or track. The start is marked with a triangle, and the finish has a double circle. If you do an event, there'll be a start where you get your map and need to punch to register your run. On permanent courses, you just need to go to the location. The aim is to get round the course as quickly and efficiently as you can. The controls are located at the centre of each circle and the lines connecting them show you which order that you should visit them. When you get to the right place, on a permanent course the control itself will be a marker and at events there will be an orange and white flag. Both will be on particular features that are marked on the map. For example, this one is where two paths cross each other, this one is between significant trees and this is on the corner of a fence next to the end of a hedge. When you get to each control, you must make sure you punch it. This registers A, that you've been there, and B, how long it took you to get there. On permanent courses, there's no need to punch. You just need to find the post or plaque. So orientating the map is one of the most important basic skills to learn in orienteering. This means lining the map up, turning it around so that it matches the features around you and you can head off in the right direction. We have the pond there, the woods here, we're on the path and it's open there, so we must be here. So do you know where we are? We've got the playground and the fence. We've also just got the track bending and the pond is right over there. So we can see we're probably here on the bend. Once the map is the right way around, you can look around and make a plan, envisage what you're doing and where you're going, then off you go in the right direction. Then it's good to check off things you pass on the way to the control, such as path junctions, bridges, or changes in vegetation. Make sure you respect the out of bounds areas on the map, like this flower bed or people's gardens. They tend to be marked in olive green or with red lines or black vertical lines. In an orienteering competition, make sure you report back to the finish by the time the course has closed, even if you haven't finished the course yet. Many events will print a phone number on the map, which you can use to contact a volunteer if there's an emergency. So already we've looked at the map, the controls and a basic course, as well as basic skills of orientating the map and looking out for things on the way to a control. At this point you should be ready to start a course and practice these skills, either at an event put on by a local club or at one of over 500 permanent courses around the country. At permanent courses, the controls are marked with posts or plaques, not the flags. 
At an event, you get the map at the start, but for a permanent course, you need to download it and take it with you. The great thing about these courses is that they can be done at a time to suit you. For more information about permanent courses and to search for locations, visit the Greater Manchester Orienteering Activities website for courses around Manchester or the British Orienteering website for other places in the UK. Oh,